Hello, my friends. Hi again. I'm so glad you're joining today um, on this makerathon. It's so much fun, isn't it? Are you learning tons of new stuff? Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Renee, and my company is called Real Home Renee. And a little bit about myself. I am a mom to two crazy boys, homeschool mom now. <laughs> And I am, you know, just a crafter of creative mind. And I love teaching others how to be creative as well. Um, I've been painting for a really long time. I've been with the Maker Studio for, what, two years now? And I love the products. And I use them throughout my home. And I use them for clients. And I just really enjoy be, being a part of the company. So, I have a fun fall project for you today and it's a little bit of a twist on a fall project, okay? So before we go on, I wanna tell you real quick before I forget, I would love for you to join me on my Facebook page. You will find that under Real Home Renee. Renee is spelled R-E-N-A-E. -E. You can also find me on Instagram under that same tag. And I just created a YouTube channel. <laughs> I just created a YouTube channel about homeschooling and kind of home stuff, and I'm also gonna be sharing uh, crafts and stuff there. So. I would love for you to join me there as well. So, all right, let's get started on our project. I want to show you a little bit of, um, I'm going to create a new finish and show you how I'm doing that. And then two, we're going to be using um, uh, some stencils, some like an oldie but goodie stencil that we have. So, let me share that with you right now. All right, do you see the... Um, sign behind me okay so here in the south I'm a southern girl we love to decorate our front porch right our front entryways our front porches so today I thought how about we do like a whole suite of project of products for um, for the front porch okay that all kind of coordinate so I do uh, porch signs Every season I do a porch sign in fact on the back of this you will see my summer porch sign that it has lemons on it. It has welcome written on it. It has lemons on it. If you go to my page, you will see um, a picture of it. So today we're going to be doing a fall. So yes, this is my fall sign. Okay. It's not your typical orange. Okay. I have a Halloween that one that's orange, but this one is kind of like a, just a vert, what I call um, my faux vertigree finish. Hmm. Let me show you how I do it. Okay. Let me show you up close. Look at that, uh-huh, yeah. You see those metallics? They look so pretty when they're on your front porch, on an entry, in your entryway, and the sun hits them. Mm-hmm, pretty, pretty stuff, okay? So, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you real quick how I create that. All right, we talk about some of the products you wanna use uh, to create it first, and then I'm gonna turn the camera down so that you can see everything I'm doing, okay? So, you want to start with the base, okay? You want to start with a darker base. Um, this is like a gray-brown color. Our gel stains are great for that. This is our gray. Um, this one is called, what's the name of this one? It's Windsor Gray, and I use this a lot, okay? Uh, this one's also a good one. You could use, you could mix the two. Uh, we have also have a dark color. This is antique pine. You can do our walnut, which is dark. Um, if you do use our stains, I want you to seal over them after they've dried before you do your decorative finish, okay? So, because they don't have a, a sealer built in, you do have to seal over them. So, I'm going to start with the dark base, okay? So, here's my dark base. Then, I'm going to go over it with um, a color called highfalutin, and I don't have the little pot of it <laughs> right now, but it's kind of a green, greenish color, okay? I have this all throughout my home, okay? It's a green, more of a green blue, but it's it leans more green. Then I'm gonna go over it with a little bit, just a teeny hint of, I do have the pot of this one. It is, um, I think this is goodness gracious, right? This is more of a blue, okay? You're gonna use a little bit of that, and then you're gonna choose a metallic, okay? So I just have some acrylics that I use for metallics. I hear a little birdie is telling me that um, we're gonna be getting some gel inks and metallics. And I'm so excited for, especially for the holidays coming up. That's gonna be so fun. Okay, 
So you're gonna choose just a metallic and we're gonna use um, just a little bit of that. Okay, so let me turn, let me turn the camera down so you can see what I'm working on. Okay, this is gonna be your sneak peek, my address plaque, okay? So let's do the vertigree finish first. It's so quick and so easy. Here's my paint plate. Do you guys have a paint plate? I do. <laughs> I use it over and over. Okay, so you want to do just a rough brush over this dark finish, okay? So we're just going to get this, essentially kind of get it on there. We're going to do like this, all right? It's a very splotchy um, type of application. So just do, you know, just get it on there. This is the green. This is your green. Now, when I'm doing the bigger signs, the, the bigger porch signs, it's a little bit of a different application. And you could go to my uh, page and I have a video on that. Um, this, though, is so quick and so easy. This is more of a dry brush method for the little pieces. Okay. So kind of fill it in, but then don't completely cover your piece. So you see how you have some of that dark coming through? All right. So now this, our Rescue Restore paints dry very quickly. They dry to a matte finish. I love, love, love our Rescue Restore paints. Okay, smell so delicious, like vanilla. Um, the next application is of goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm gonna squirt. A, if you guys are a painter, you know what these bottles are. These are FIFO bottles, right? And I use them um, to put a lot of paint in, especially when I'm doing furniture pieces. See if I can get it to come out. All right, now, this blue. So if you look at a true vertigree piece of copper after it's vertigreed, I guess that's the word for it, um, it leans a little more blue, blue-green, right? So you wanna make sure you get a little bit of this blue in there. All right, so I'm kind of dry brushing it on. If you get it too heavy, spread it out and I always, always work with a uh, fine mist spray bottle. So if you get it too heavy, don't be afraid to spray it out and get it, thin it out a little bit, okay? So I'm just getting this on so that you see some different variations of the blue and the greens in there. This is a layered piece. These are all layered pieces, so don't be too exact, okay? You'll be able to see it better when it's dry. All right, so when I'm dry brushing, I use my grubbiest, like thinnest, uh, you know, just rough brushes, okay? So, usually chip brushes. Now I'm gonna use, let's see, I'm gonna grab metallic. One note about metallics, okay? Uh, sometimes it's hard to find like a good, metallic that you like. Um, so if you can't find a good metallic, you can make your own with our mica powders, okay? This is our bright bronze, okay? I don't have the copper with me right now, but this is a bronze color. And you can mix that with a little bit of our um, top coat, okay? So you know, with the metallics, a little bit goes a long way. So here we go with our chip brush, start at the top. Long strokes. Anytime you're painting, you want long strokes. Okay. So get it on there. There we go. And you can use gold. You can use your dark bronzes. This is more of a copper color that I'm using. Okay. So gently, gently, gently. If you get the metallics on there too, um, too much, you can always, again, spray it out with water or use a little bit of sandpaper or steel wool and kind of rub it down and it kind of tones it down a little bit. This will look more unified when it's uh, dry. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me, 
that's the technique, okay, for that. It is so, so easy. All right, so I'm gonna put this to the side and then I'm gonna work on our welcome sign, okay? So here's the finish already that's on it. This is that vertebrae finish. Uh, the key to getting pieces that are uh, uniform, I say uniform, you want some consistency when you're doing like a suite of products. So the consistency that I have with my products, with my porch sign, my welcome sign, my address plaque is one, is the finish. Two, is the stencil design, okay? So here is the oldie but goodie welcome stencil that I had talked about earlier. And I used our leaves all over, okay? So I kind of, you know, taped this away so I didn't go over the welcome part, but I used the leaves. I used the leaves all up and down, let's see, all up and down the porch line there. So it goes all up and down. And then again, on the address plaque, you will see the leaves again. So what we're gonna do, I am gonna do the welcome on here. And I'm gonna use our gel art inks. My, probably my favorite medium to work with right now is the gel art inks, okay? Um, so let's take this off. You can tell I've used this quite a bit. Let's see if I can get it to lay down. Y'all, I got so excited about doing this the other day that I yanked the stencil off the backing and it stuck together and then pulled a little bit of it off. Don't do what I did. If, if your stencil sticks together, your adhesive stencil sticks together, run it underwater and then let it kind of dry out and gently pull it apart. All right. So I think I'm eyeing it correctly. I'm just trying to get it centered here. All right, so the way this is on this board, I just took plywood, right? We just had some plywood scraps left over in our shop. So that's what this is, plywood, and then the porch sign is a six foot pine board, common pine board. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm using Gel Art Ink in the color Hold Your Horses. So I'm gonna do, I don't have much left. I've gotta place an order, guys. There's so much great stuff in our fall catalog. You guys, I'm so excited. I've gotta get all my fall stencils in so that I can do my fall projects. So on the edges, I'm doing a dark gray right here. You can hear it, you hear that sound? That is the sound of your ink or your medium going through those stencils. Now the, the empty part that you see, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but that is an open, um, it's an open uh, mesh. So you're pushing your medium through the mesh. Go. getting it on there and I am not perfect by any means the great thing about this gel art ink is that you have a little bit more open time meaning it doesn't dry quite as fast so if you do make a mistake you can go back with a q-tip and water and erase it I have used this gel art ink on so many things in my house. I use it on fabrics for pillows. I use it on, it is a permanent um, medium, okay? So it's like a, um, almost like a screen print ink. If you use it on fabric, if you plan to wash that fabric like pillows, you need to heat set. You've gotta heat set it to make it permanent. Now, Ooh. 
Yeah, I'm almost out of this, guys. I have got to order some more because I've used it. I use it so much. And I want to check out our new no-bake ceramic paints. Can't wait for those. To try those. Okay. All right. So we got our gray on. Then with my same spreader, I just wiped that off. I'm gonna use, this one is called Well I Declare, and I've used this quite a bit as well, so I need more of it. I'm just using the white on the welcome part. Okay. See how that goes on? My spreader, this is not the full size spreader that you would get. You would get a bigger one. I cut mine apart so it can handle it a little bit better. Now, this vertebrae finish that I do, think about how you can use it on different things. You could, you could paint your pumpkins with this color. I love having different colors for fall. I especially love, um, I love like navies and dark teals along with your oranges and coppers and things like that. I think that's just so rich. You can use whatever color you want, but you know, <laughs> just giving you some ideas. So when I'm finished with this, I'm gonna go over and do my address plaque. All right, so I'm almost done with this. How cute would this stencil be on a welcome mat? One of those core mats. You could do a stencil on that. How cute would that be? Okay. Alright. Now, here we go. Ready for the magic? The magic happens. Yes. Look at that. How cute is that? Okay, so I've got a welcome sign for my front porch. And so I'm gonna lay this over to the side. You do want to wash these stencils, mild soap and water maybe with a little sponge or scrub brush. Okay, there's my welcome sign. All right, and then you see how this is drying? It's drying so lovely. All right, here we go. So I've already got my finish. I've got my leaves there from the stencil, and then I'm gonna do my address pop, clock. So quick, so easy. A tip if you're doing the, this address clock, so these numbers, come from the stencil called Alphabet 3, okay? And I love how the letters and numbers are written. They look like hand lettering, or faux hand lettering. So it's one of my favorite fonts that we have in the stencils. All right, you see how little gel art ink we use. So easy. Okay, here we go. Let's see how these look. Oh, ooh, my two didn't get art. Right, so I would go back once that's dried, put this on and fill that in because that's a little bit light. Because I'm doing it so fast for you guys. I want you to see it. I've just got a bowl of water over here that I'm putting this into. Because you want to wash these fairly quickly. You do have some time before it dries on the stencil. You just want to make sure that whatever medium you're using does not dry in the mesh. There you go. Da da. Do you love it? Give this two. You see that? Do you see it? All right, so it's backwards probably. All right, yeah, so when this dries, I'll, I'll put it back on there and I will fill that in. So that's just a little bit um, lacking right there, but that's okay. It's so easy to do, right? So now to finish this off, I take my metallic and a fine liner brush 
and I go in and I just kind of make some tendrils around. Um, you can do it with gold. You can do it with like your dark bronze or your copper and um, make some tendrils, highlight your leaves. So there you go. How cute is this gonna be in my front porch? Like the whole thing is gonna match. It's gonna look so fall-ish without using your typical orange color, right? So I challenge you to think of different ways that you can come up with different finishes for the fall. Maybe some different colors, I would love to see those. Join me on my page and, and really comment and let me know if you have questions because I love uh, conversing with you guys and, and talking with you guys about different projects. So thanks for joining. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, guys. Bye.